This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a GE dishwasher that when you try to start it, you hear three beeps. The LED light <clears throat> also blinks and you hear three beeps. So press start. We get the beeping, three beeps, and then the blinking. And if you had the door open and you did the same thing, you get the same reaction. And this is actually a way the dishwasher is trying to tell you that the door is open. And I know the door is locked. I, I'm pushing it in. It can't go any further, but I still get the same reaction. So probably what's happened is this kind of a cheapo door lock mechanism has failed and it's no longer able to tell the computer or the controller that the door is locked. So here's the new one and we're going to be replacing this. It's pretty easy to do. It just lives at the top of the frame and you have to take the dishwasher out from the cabinet by removing these two screws. But it just take you a couple of minutes. Easy to pop, pop in the new door lock. So we've got those two screws out that are holding it in. And then I'm going to grab the dishwasher, pull it toward me. This one's kind of stuck by these um, trim pieces on the side. So I'm going to push them in. And then I'll bring the whole dishwasher toward me. I just got to come out by about maybe four inches out from the cabinet. Right about there. Skid. I'm going to remove these two Phillips head screws. And then I can take off the old lock. So probably 80% of the time when you get this three door beep thing, it would be fixed by replacing this part, which is only about 20 bucks. And if it doesn't work though, it could be the main controller is actually malfunctioning. It is also possible that the wires here that lead down to the controller are damaged, but that's pretty unlikely. So I'm pulling off the old controller, or the old door lock. Put the new one in position. And I'll go ahead and plug it back in. We're going to go over in this video too how to get to that uh, main controller in case you have to change it. So I got that into position and this is just a little thing of tape. It doesn't really make a difference if, if you took it off. It's no big deal. Uh, it'll work either way. I think it just probably helps with waterproofing. So I'm going to put that Phillips head screw in there, put the other one in, and then we'll get those tight. We'll give it a test. Okay. Before I reinstall it, I'm going to go ahead and close it, press the button, and I get the same thing. I get three beeps and blinking LED. So it still thinks that the door is open. So that did not solve the problem. And that means that the controller is defective, which is also fairly inexpensive. So to get to the controller, you want to unplug it and then take out these two screws at the bottom there on the kick panel. And you can go ahead and just pull the kick panel off and there's some insulation underneath. You can just grab it and pull it towards you. 
and then the controller is just living right uh, behind the door and I'm just looking at the wire that goes from the controller up to the door lock making sure there's no obvious cuts sometimes you can have rodents that actually eat through the wire here's a little tech sheet that's for technicians and it gives us a test where we can make sure that the um, door is locked properly or, or a way to see if the computer thinks the door is locked properly what we do is we press this cycle select button and the start button for five seconds and if all the lights blink it means it thinks the door is open if you get all solid lights it means it thinks the door is closed when I ran this test I got a result of all blinking lights so it just confirmed that the controller is thinking that the door is open that's why the cycle won't, won't start and that's just um, probably a part of the circuit on the main controller is damaged and is not able to see that the door is locked so this, this is the cycle select button on the left the one on the right is the start button we just press them and hold them in for five seconds and we get at 815 on the display and a bunch of blinking lights and that means the con controller thinks that the door is still open which it is not so I'm taking the whole dishwasher out of the cabinet I'm gonna lay it on its back to kind of show you how you can get to the main controller but you don't have to do this you can do it by just taking off the front panel on the door um, either way is fine this one comes out so easily that I'm just going to do it by setting it on its back. I'm going to take out these screws that are holding on the main controller. These are just quarter inch screws. Just two in each corner. Take out this modular connector that's on the bottom of the controller. I take out this other quarter inch screw that's a little harder to get to so I'll use my angle tool these are the wires come in to the controller and I'm going to take out another screw here on this junction box. This is a quarter inch screw. I'll pull up on the sheet metal part of the junction box. Oh, I'm sorry, it was a bigger one, uh, maybe a 7 8. Pull that screw out. Pull up on that cover. This little modular power connector here I'm going to depress the tab and disconnect the power connector that brings power to the, to the controller it's all modular pretty cool it comes right out and that's the whole controller right there there's a couple of little screws here that allow you to take the uh, cover plates off so you can pull out the circuit board so when you buy the controller it's just the circuit board instead of um, the whole sheet metal cover I think they're about 80, 80 bucks customers are not too happy with these GE dishwashers because they're inexpensive but they just don't last very long the components fail pretty, pretty uh, quickly within two or three years here's the controller so to um, replace it you just pull out all these modular jacks and then you have to gently pry out the old circuit board there's little pins that hold it in then pop in the new one <clears throat> put the jacks back in and then close up the sheet metal cover and reinstall it and you're all done and yeah it's about 20, 15 to 20 percent of the time <clears throat> it is the controller that has failed and that's the case 
with this, this particular dishwasher. So once you have the new board in, just going to put it all back together. Add those quarter inch screws with the uh, rubber, black rubber gasket. Get those tight. All right, we're going to get the controller <clears throat> back into position. Put the modular connector back in. Put the power connector back in. Yeah, yeah, it's meditative. <laughs> I'm going to kind of wiggle it back, the whole assembly back where it's supposed to go. I'll add those quarter inch screws in again to hold it. Checking all my connections, make sure everything's tight. And these are the ones that are a little bit harder to get to. I use the angle tool. This is a DeWalt angle tool, really like it. Gets you in those tight spaces. There we go. And we can go ahead and tilt the dishwasher back up to the vertical position. So I'm going to get it back into alignment and then put the um, sound dampening uh, blanket back onto it. And then I'll fit it all back into the cabinet. This one's pretty cool because the drain line and the fill line are long enough where I didn't have to even disconnect them. I did unplug it and then the, had to have the cord come out a little bit so that I could get the dishwasher out far enough. So I'm going to put those two Phillips head screws back in that hold it in position. And we are done. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.